The Wells Gray Park Camping Murders On August 2, 1982, Bob Johnson, 44, Jackie Johnson, 41, and their daughters Janet, 13, and Karen, 11, went on a two-week camping trip with Jackie's parents, George Bentley, 66, and Edith Bentley, 59. The group traveled to the remote Wells Gray Provincial Park, a wilderness park located in east-central British Columbia, Canada, around 300 miles to the northeast of Vancouver. It covers 5,250 square kilometers and is British Columbia's fourth-largest park. Before the arrival of Europeans, the Wells Gray area was a valued hunting ground to the Canine Lake Aboriginal groups. The Johnsons pitched camp at a secluded area near the old Bear Creek prison site. The Bentleys subsequently arrived with their truck and camper van with a boat on top. Sadly it was the last family vacation they were ever to go on. The Johnsons and Bentleys were last heard from on August 6, 1982. Their time near the beautiful Wells Gray Park was cut short by a sadistic, brutal killer. A sad and depressing story of outdoor adventure gone wrong. Welcome to Spider Stories. We bring you true stories every other day that are guaranteed to send chills down your spine. From stories of restless spirits to encounters with otherworldly beings, you will be captivated by these pulse-pounding narratives. So buckle up because these stories will keep you on the edge of your seat. On August 16, 1982, Bob Johnson failed to return to work at Gorman Brothers Lumber in West Bank. This was very unusual for the 25-year employee. Fellow workers reported that Bob was missing on August 23, 1982. Five weeks after the families were last heard from, on September 13, 1982, a mushroom picker reported finding a burned-out car with the driver's side door open in a clearing off a mountainside logging road. The wreckage was similar to the car that the Johnsons were driving. Police found a pile of burnt bones on the back seat, which were later identified as that of four adults and in the trunk were the remains of two girls. Forensic investigation of the bone fragments found that they had been shot with a .22 caliber gun. Because of the location of the vehicle in an inaccessible area, it was quickly assumed that a local was responsible for the murders. A search of the area by the RCMP resulted in six spent .22 caliber ammunition shells being located. Some beer caps of the brand known to be drunk by Bob Johnson were also found as well as full bottles cooling in a nearby stream. Two sticks with sharp ends, probably used by the two girls to roast marshmallows were also at the site. However, the Bentley's 1981 Ford truck and camper along with their camping gear, boat, motor, and other possessions were still missing. In April 1983, a television reenactment of the killings was filmed on the site of the murders, which was then broadcast across Canada. Police hoped the reenactment would spark someone's memory but despite being flooded with calls, no solid leads came of the effort. The RCMP also posted a $7,500 reward, printed 10,000 posters and sent them to police detachments and post offices across North America to no avail. But then on October 18, 1983, 14 months after the murders with the trail running cold for the killer, the Bentley's camper truck was finally found by two forestry workers, near Bear Creek, on an old logging road near Trophy Mountain. The spot was only 15 miles from the murder site and 20 miles from where the Johnson's car was located and on the different side of the mountain. It had been burned using an accelerant, probably gasoline mixed with something else. The truck was well hidden and it appeared that there had been an attempt to drive the truck into the gorge, but logs had blocked its path. Police lifted the wreck out with a helicopter and transported it to the RCMP crime lab in Vancouver. The burnt remnants provided no clues, but the location was of interest. The location reconfirmed a local was most likely involved as outsiders would have been unlikely to find the isolated spot. The RCMP started questioning possible suspects again in Clearwater. They went door to door in the small community and questioned everyone in town a second time. David William Shearing, 24, who lived locally was identified by someone who told police that, over a year earlier, Shearing had inquired about how to re-register a Ford pickup and repair a hole in its door. 
Shearing lived three miles from the site of the murders and the police had never released the information about the bullet hole. On November 19, 1983, the RCMP found Shearing in Tumblr Ridge, north of Kamloops, where he was due to appear in court in a few days on a possession of stolen property charge of a significant amount of tools. He was taken into custody for questioning. Despite his reputation and criminal record, Shearing came from a respectable family. His father, since deceased, had once been a prison guard and his brother was a sheriff. Shearing had graduated from high school and had successfully completed a heavy mechanics course. Royal Canadian Mounted Police Detectives Sergeant Mike Eastham and Constable Ken Liebel were convinced David Shearing was guilty from the beginning and tried to get his confidence. Initially, he was led to believe the arrest was related to a hit-and-run incident which he quickly confessed to before the detectives confronted him with the Bennett Johnson case. Shearing accidentally admitted to Easton that he had heard the murders were committed at Bear Creek which was not information that had been released to the public. After effort and persuasion, Easton managed to convince Shearing to confess to the six murders and he eventually agreed to reenact the murders and even to turn over the murdered family's possessions. Shearing initially stated in his confession that he shot the four adults as they sat around their campfire, then shot the girls as they slept in the tent, saying he only wanted to rob them. He told the RCMP that he loaded the bodies into their car, drove it by night to the mountainside, and set it on fire using five gallons of gasoline. He said he cleaned the campsite, then took the camper back to his nearby property, only to burn it later when he discovered how difficult it was to re-register. In trial Shearings pled guilty to six counts of second-degree murder for the 1982 Johnson and Bedley families. As part of the guilty plea, Shearing stated in a written statement, I walked out of the bush from behind the camper and started shooting. I put the bodies in the car, for in the back seat, and the two little ones in the trunk. I poured gasoline, it just went home. I stood back and watched it burn. I went to the tent. I knelt down, and I shot the other two. The apparent confession was a complete fabrication but at the time the RCMP had had little choice but to accept Shearing's version of events due to lack of evidence. On April 17, 1984, Justice McKay sentenced David William Shearing to six concurrent terms of life in prison with no chance of parole for 25 years. This was the maximum possible penalty for second-degree murder and the first time in Canadian history that it had been handed out. However, many were perplexed that the sentences were concurrent, giving him the chance to escape the prison system in later life. Shearing did not appeal his sentence. Following Shearing's conviction, RCMP Sergeant Mike Easton re-interviewed him and got the disturbing truth behind the killings. Easton told Shearing, You know why I'm here, David. I think you sexually abused those girls before you killed them. You told me some time ago that you would consider telling me the rest of the story after you were sentenced. Well, I'm here to collect. David Shearing finally told Sergeant Easton what really happened. Confessing that he lusted over the young girls and was determined to sexually abuse them even if it meant killing the parents and grandparents. Shearing said he saw the family when they set up camp and spent several days spying on them, with a fantasy to have sex with Janet and Karen. At dusk on August 10, 1982, he walked into the campsite with his rifle and shot Bob Johnson, then Jackie, and then George and Edith in cold blood. The two girls were already in their tent, ready for bed. Shearing said he looked in, told them a dangerous biker gang was around and their parents had run for help. While they stayed in the tent, he said, he loaded the bodies of their parents and grandparents into the back seat of the family car and covered the bodies with a blanket. Then he crawled into the tent with the girls. He kept the girls alive for nearly a week, staying with them both at his ranch and at a small fishing cabin on the Clearwater River whilst repeatedly raping them. They left the cabin after they were nearly discovered by a prison guard who was supervising prisoners from a local jail. Shearing moved the girls to his family farm the next day, and then, on August 16, 1982, he walked Karen, the younger daughter, into the woods and killed her. He repeated the process with Janet, the older daughter, on August 17, 1982, telling the girls to turn around so he could urinate, then shot each sister in the back of the head. Afterwards, he took the bodies back to the Johnson family car, which he'd hidden and put the girls' bodies in the trunk. He drove the car to a secluded spot and burnt it. 
In September 2008, David Shearing was up for parole 24 years after his conviction for the murders. The National Parole Board ruled that he still had violent sexual fantasies and hadn't completed sex offender treatment. Hence he was not ready for freedom. His second application, in 2012, was also rejected when a petition with 13,258 signatures was presented to the National Parole Board. As of today David Shearing or David Ennis remains in prison at Bowdoin Institution, south of Red Deer, Alberta. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to stay tuned for more true stories.